Okay, let's look at this one. This question is from Ogu Lempilo Dube as well. Again, it's also with motors and generators. So let's also scrutinize and then we can see how we actually move on. So we have a diagram below that shows a simplified version of an AC generator. AC means alternating current. It's got split rings and not, and not slip rings like a DC generator. When we talk about a generator, the energy conversion is mechanical to electrical. You must first work hard before you can have the benefits of having electricity. Let's scrutinize this. I've got an, uh, uh, two magnets here with your south and north. Remember, the magnetic field will always move north to south. I've got two rings here, which we call slip rings. Remember when we talk about when we had the DC, let me just see with this one, it only had one ring like that. So how I remember it, when we talk about DC, I always think of two half circles, which are split. These are the split rings, and these two are then slip rings. And then we have carbon brushes there. And then this is my amateur that's also rotating. But however, in this case, I do not know in which direction it's actually rotating, right? So I need to have a little bit of more information first. So number 9.1 says, name the component, the component in this arrangement that makes it different from a DC generator. Remember, the only thing that's different, remember what I said, the difference between a motor, there is a difference between a motor and a generator in terms of mechanical to electrical or electrical to mechanical. However, I can have a DC generator or an AC generator. It depends whether the one has got split rings, giving it direct current, or it's got slip rings, which make it alternating current. So the different devices that actually make it AC or DC. In this case, only for one mark, they want to know the component that makes it different from a DC motor. Very, very easy. So the examiner just wanted to know whether you actually know how to change it or what makes it different. And this is slip rings. Okay, that is a horrible S. Let's write it properly. This is slip rings. Slip rings. So just for interest sake, when we talk about a generator, remember that one is a um, generator. A generator has split rings. It has split rings. Because some of the questions that I've actually seen, they will tell you, uh, for example, uh, Mbali has got an AC generator, but she wants to change it into a DC generator. What, did, what part does she need to change or what part must she go buy in order to change the two, right? Or they're going to tell you Bali and Tobile both have, uh, one has a DC, one has an AC. Identify whose is what based on the components that they have. So you need to know how to identify split rings and slip rings. But always think of the two rings that are split and that's DC generators. So that's 9.1. So let's look at the other one. So 9.2 says, again, we need to sketch, my darlings. We need to have a sharp pencil and a ruler. We need to sketch a graph of induced EMF versus time. So they're telling us induced EMF and time. Now remember, this will be on the horizontal plane. This will be on the vertical plane. So versus time for two complete rotations of the coil. Now, I want us to go back with what I said in the previous, in the previous question. When we talk about a rotation, a complete rotation or a revolution, it must give you one circle in technicality. When we talk about alternating, it must form an S, think of a sine graph. When we talk about a DC, it will form those two humps, right? But now if it's two complete rotations, it means it is double of everything. Because if you only have one crest and one trough, with, an, with both amplitudes, it means it's only one. If it gives you one circle, it's one rotation. So always keep that in mind. The examiners will try to, to confuse you. Sometimes they might even tell you uh, one and a half rotation, just to see whether you understand that the, the, the sine graph will have one and a half and an extra circle or extra bump and so forth. So let's sketch. This is for two marks. Let's see what the examiner wanted us to do here. And this is... 9.2. Now we need to sketch. Remember also when you're sketching, always name your graph. This is my EMF, right? And it is in volts. It's a capital V. It's not a small V because small V means velocity. And this is my time in seconds. So now we have to have two complete rotations. And I know, let me just double check what this is. We're talking about an AC. Remember AC alternating current, sine graph. If you have to draw your A, draw your A like that. You can remove that. That is then 
the alternating current, but two complete rotations. I'm going to have one rotation. Da, 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 da. How do I know this is one rotation? I've got a crest at the top and I've got a trough at the bottom. If I was to change this and move it this way, na, 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 in this direction, I would then get a full circle. So that is only one rotation. But they said two complete rotations. So we are not finished. So I'm going to continue because this continues and then it goes in this direction. Now I've got another crest at the top. I've got another trough at the bottom. These are two complete rotations. This crest must have a friend and this crest must have a friend. This is then two complete rotations. I can then, you can actually further spice it up just to show you and you know what you're doing. That this will be the time for the first one, time for the first rotation, and this will be the time for the second rotation because the first rotation actually only ends there. And then the coil continued to then turn. So now let's see what the next question is. So the next question says, a practical version of the generator above has a large number of turns of the coil and it produces an RMS potential difference of 240. So now we have 9.3, which is, now we must give state two ways in which the induced EMF can then be increased. This is also another question that they love, but it's also very simple. Think of it in like your everyday life. If you're at a party, but you're not really hearing the music properly, what do you do? You turn up the volume, right? So it's the same thing that we need to do in generators. We can actually um, have a greater current and so forth by doing certain things. Unfortunately, you must know this off by heart. So let's see what the examiner wanted us to do here. And this is then 9.3. Let me just go to a different slide. This is 9.3. So state two ways in which we can actually induce this. I'm going to give you three, just in case in the next exam they give you ask for three. The first one, we can actually increase the speed of the rotation. Increase, increase the speed, the speed of the rotation. That is the first one. I mean, obviously, if the, if the, if the amateur, the coil is rotating quicker, it means something must change. The next one is to increase the number of coils. Increase the number of coils. Remember that this amateur has got coils that are rotated around it, and the more coils that you add, it stops it from being jerky, or the turns. And then the last one is use stronger magnets. If we use stronger magnets, it will, it will induce something stronger use stronger magnets. So in this case, let me just double check, they only wanted, they said name state two. Um, if they write this in capital letters, the examiner is very serious about you naming two. Please don't go name three. I just gave you three, just in case the other examiner wants you guys to name three. But it means if you're gonna name three instead of two, they might give you negative marking because you are not following instructions. So make sure you follow instructions and you only give two. But learn these three. The next one, Let's look at this question. It says we need to define the term root mean square, which is RMS value of an AC potential difference. Now, the word define is very important, right? When you are defining something, for example, if I say define the weather outside, you're going to tell me it's hot, it's cold. I can't say define the weather. You say, ah, the weather is what, what, or somewhat. That's not really defining. When you are defining something, you need to use the correct terminologies. Like the weather is hot, it's cold, it's windy, there's a breeze, there's this, there's that. You talk weather language, right? So the same thing, when you need to define, you have to use the correct terminologies. But the nice thing about physics is that all our definitions and all our laws and principles remain the same, which means you must know it off by heart. And when we divide the, define the root mean square, this is what we say, 9.4 the RMS, the RMS value of an AC voltage is the value of the AC voltage of the AC voltage which will dissipate the same amount same amount of energy of energy as dc 
And that is then what, how you define RMS in physical sciences. You need to know this off by heart. They might even ask it as a true or false, and then you have to rectify it, so make sure that you do know it. But otherwise, guys, it is a really easy topic. As you can see, they ask the same thing the whole time. They just, they just know how to spice it here and there. So make sure that you actually understand what the examiner is asking, especially when they actually ask you about the mathematics, about a stove or a kettle and so forth. Remember to use the correct formula, as well as you need to use a formula where you actually have all the things already given to you. Do not do any side pieces. And always remember, this is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And then I promise you, if you can bank this for full marks, because some of them are going for 15, for 12, and so forth, you're actually on a good standing for paper one. Very easy topic. All you need to do is read, read, read. The questions don't really change, but you need to know what you're looking for.